What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reef and come back at you with another video and today it's early in the morning and I have a problem. A couple of my cardinals have died and I think it's because of fish aggression. So I went out and bought some plexiglass and we're about to cut it and make a little acclimation box because the next round of fish I'm putting in, I'm not gonna make the same mistake. The breeder box didn't really work because the fish couldn't really see them. So I'm gonna make an acclimation box for $32 plus the solvent, so like $43 max. Pretty cheap, so, and it's gonna be a huge box. Let's see how it works. I'm going over to my friend's house, and I'm gonna use this table saw, because that's gonna make it like so much easier. All right, I'll see you guys there. So when I was at my friend's, I decided not to film me cutting all the acrylic up, because it would take forever, and I didn't have time, you know, daddy duty and stuff calls, so I had to get home quick. But I'll show you what I did use, so that you'll kind of know what you need to do if you want to use a table saw. So the main thing was, you know, just measure everything out, use a framing square, mark your stuff, and you want to use a finer tip gr or saw, sorry. Um, this blade is very fine, which is good. This one here, you can see, this is not gonna be what you want. You want to use one of the finer tip ones, or finer blade ones, because it's gonna really cut into that acrylic. Now, one of the things I noticed with the acrylic is that it would bend and kind of warp when I was kind of guiding it in just because it's so thin. So you have to really be careful because, you know, you gotta wear eyes, ears, and uh, hand protection or else, you know, you could kind of get uh, some stuff kicking back at you and you have to use the little guider. Eyes, ears, and gloves, always wear them. I'm gonna keep this in both my videos because I'm actually doing two videos at the same time for this. In case you guys want to search it, you could see the, um, DIY cover for the Triton, or uh, not the Triton, the trigger system sump, and you could also use this for the DIY acclimation box. So killing two birds with one stone, sorry, you gotta watch this. I mean, it's a minute, whatever, come on. Now, I looked everywhere for um, like what would be good for this, and it said weld on four would be perfect for these acrylic type applications. So I'm gonna take this out in the garage, put this together, there's a little, uh, like a fine tip in here, put it on. Obviously I'm gonna have to pour some in here, funnel it in, and see how good my acrylic uh, skills are. This is a DIY job, so we'll see. Um, this is probably like, I think it was 11, 12 bucks. I mean, it's like, it's super cheap. It's cheap. I don't remember how much this is, honestly. I think it was like 25 bucks. I think this whole project's gonna be like 35 bucks. All in all, maybe, maybe 36 bucks. I don't know, I'll throw the link in and I'll probably you know, look back and you'll see me say how much it costs right now. But let's get up and start gluing. Apparently I have to cut this out. Huh, we'll see. I'm wondering if I can just puncture this. I don't know. Cause I gotta pour it in over there. <sighs> this seems like a dumb idea, but I'm gonna use a chisel. I don't know, we'll see. All right, so watch the video and the king of DIY, Joey, shout out to you, uh, said to hit it with a screwdriver and pop it out. So we'll see if I'm gonna fail royally at this. Oh, Jesus. Let's see. Don't. Come on. All right, let's see. Oh, baby, are you gonna work? Oh, I did it. Oh, now I got on my hands. Crap, I gotta wash them. So, I'm back with gloves on because this says it could cause, uh, it's suspected of having uh, cancer causing agents and uh, birth defects. So, yeah, I'm not really wanting to mess with that. So, got this going. I'm gonna pour some in here. I need to pour a little more. Not sure how much to put in. A little more because I don't want to have to do this ever again. Man, that thing smells strong. All right. Definitely got some on the outside. Thank God I had gloves on. All right, so let's put that up. I hope these gloves aren't going to get welded. Are they? I don't know. All right, so my diagram, I forgot to hit the record button, so now I gotta explain this again. I have a 32 inch by 44 inch uh, piece of acrylic for like 32 bucks. I'm gonna cut it into 14 inch sections here, and I'll have like a two inch section at the bottom left over. And I'm thinking about making like a little Euro brace on the top of the box, 
just to uh, set my extra 14 inch by 14 inch section. So we'll have three 14 inch by 18 inch sides. So one, two, and three on this side, and then the two 14 by 14s are gonna kind of pinch it in like this on this extra piece. I think about just sitting on top. I don't know, we'll see. But that's kind of the plan for this. I already cut it up, so let's get started on uh, gluing this together. All right, so I kind of realized something really important. When I'm putting this together, I don't want it to be watertight. It's gonna be sitting in the box. So, um, yeah, you know that means I gotta drill some holes in this. So I'm probably going to stack the 14 by 14s up, and then I'm going to drill through the top with a drill press. I mean, I could use it like a hand drill, but I got a drill press, so who cares? I'm gonna drill through it and get this puppy done. All right, the drill press is set up and I'm gonna use 13 64 bit just to see how it's gonna work through one of the uh, 14 by 14 inch sections. I decided to go with that because I think a quarter of an inch might be too big um, for the fish that I'm gonna be acclimating because eventually I'm gonna put in some fire dart fish and I know that they can squeeze through like tight spaces. So I'm gonna drill a hole with this first, see what it looks like. I might go down, I might go, yeah, I'll probably go down, I won't go up but we'll see how it goes. Well, it worked, as you can see, kind of cracked a little bit right here, just a little bit when I put some pressure on it. So I think I'm gonna have to put less pressure and then hope that it's gonna work. So let's try it again. Okay, so lessons learned. I only drilled uh, four sets of three holes in this one. Not too many cracks. I mean, you can kind of, you can kind of see a little splinter there. But if you drill and go ham like I did on this one, you can see on this one it just cracked through. Which isn't a big deal. I mean, I'm not looking for it to be watertight. Obviously, we want water to go through it because fish are going to be in this box. But the more holes you drill, the structural integrity just takes a nose dive. So, lesson learned. Also, went with the drill press that was going way too slow. Started cracking more stuff, so I amped up the speed and it did way better. So my plan is to use this weld on for it and run a bead all down here. Then put one of those acrylic panels vertical like this, hold it there, and probably brace it with eh, maybe the DeWalt fan or let's do BRS, one of these guys here. Brace it there and see how it turns out. And then I'll do the same thing with this side and let them kind of, you know, stay for a while before messing with the um, 14 inch sections. So this box is gonna be huge because I haven't finished it yet, but I mean, just look at this monster. I love it. It's gonna be awesome. The fish are gonna be perfect in there. Hopefully, I gotta put the other bottom part on. I'm waiting for the top to kind of cure, and then I will put the bottom on, and so the box is done. And it doesn't look too bad, honestly. It's really freaking big. Really freaking big. So, Probably gonna have the top part of this out of water. And probably about here will be down, will be in water. Um, yeah, this thing's a monster. Probably should have made it a little smaller, but I wanted the biggest thing possible for the fish. So hopefully this all fits perfectly in the back corner of the tank, cause that's where I planned on putting it. And I think it should be just small enough, yes, to fit. This is a giant acclimation box, so hopefully this all works. So the box is finally done. I decided to put like a little Euro brace on the top because I wanted to kind of hang it on the top using this Euro brace and a magnet and my Euro brace. Um, I'll kind of show you guys how that works out, but this is a giant box. I mean, I knew it would be big, but you know, once you kind of put a dinner plate in there, you kind of see that this is ginormous. I wanted it big because I wanted to put a bunch of fish in here. Now this was um, a 14 by 18 inch box, which is pretty obnoxiously huge. But I want a lot of space for my fish. I want them to be in there. I want them to be comfortable. Um, I could have gotten away, hindsight's always 2020, with the pre-cut eight by 10 sheets. Honestly, they were like five bucks and all I need would be about six of them. You know, so for a little bit less, actually I wouldn't even need six of them, I need five of them because I'd have the top open. But you know, get the six one and then you could do like the Euro bracing on the side if you want or just clip it to the side with magnets. So I mean, I mean, if you're like got a smaller tank, definitely do that. This is a giant box. Do not make it this big unless you got like a 180 or bigger or if you have tons of room in like a 75 or something like that. But you know, <laughs> this is huge. 
So I'm a genius and didn't realize that uh, I made this opening here 10 inches and this is 14 inches tall. Oh, I'm gonna have to uh, push that out of the way to get it in. I'm gonna have to ask my wife. Hey honey. So I may have made this too big and yeah, I'm gonna have to cut it down to half this size. My wife is laughing at me because I spent way too much time on this. Oh my God, I should have gone with the smaller sizes that were already pre-cut and would save me so much time, but I decided not to because I wanted a big box. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Cut this in half, this is horrible. <laughs> so, as you can see, really Daniel? Take two on this box. So as you can see, second try is a charm. Yes, Daniel's laughing because he knows how much pain in the butt this was for me. This is seven by 14 by seven. So way, way, way smaller. You can see compared to the tank, the other one wouldn't even fit in it. This one's gonna be tucked nicely right in the corner. I added a little Euro brace on the top. As you can see that I'm gonna use these magnets to kind of hold it to the top. So let's see how this goes. I'm gonna try it by myself without my wife's help. She's in the corner waiting on standby with my son in case I decide to destroy the tank again with a giant box. The devil. <laughs> there goes the tripod. Oh. You, do you like what you have done? Really? Is this entertaining for you? Huh? Are you satisfied? So as you can see, this is a perfect fit. The other one kind of took up uh, everything up there. This tucks nice and neat into the corner and I have tonsy hair magnets right here. So this has been quite the journey for this acclimation box. All four, five fire dart fish and five antias, which I just fed because they need to eat a lot. But this acclimation box, seven by seven by 14 is awesome for this 200 gallon tank. <laughs> that 18 by 14, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep that design in there just in case someone's got like a monstrous tank that they need. I don't know. Um, what I would recommend for people to do is to have, um, go to Home Depot, Lowe's, they have eight by 10 sheets. You can use those eight by 10 sheets. If you have a smaller tank, definitely cut it in half. I think you would only need an eight by 10 if you have like, probably like a 75 gallon or up, anything less, cut those ends in half or something like that um, because these boxes are pretty big. Now, if I would have done that, I would have been in this for like 20 bucks. I really would have like, you know, not been an idiot and gone like, three times the size I wanted to do, three times the size I should have done, I could have saved like 10, 20 bucks. But uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. My acrylic skills kind of got a little bit better. One of the things I did notice was um, if you do drill holes in this, make sure to go slow. Cause if you go fast, you can kind of see I cracked the bottom one. I mean, it's not gonna hold water. You want water to go through it. So it's just more for aesthetics. And yes, I used drill press. It was super easy with drill press. If you got it, use it. If not, just hand drill. So this is a pretty easy DIY project if you measure three times as opposed to twice, and then you can cut once as opposed to me cutting like two times. But overall, I think it's a great idea. I mean, you can get these cheap ones on uh, Marine Depot for like 45 bucks. Those eShops ones, which are almost as big as this, are like $89. Granted, they don't come with the magnets here, so you're gonna need magnets. I just had these laying around. If you have magnets laying around, great. If not, you could probably do it where you turn this vertical and you have like a top part of it out of the water if you wanted to make it tall and skinny. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Thank God, because this took forever for me to do. You know, if you, if you have time, do it. If you don't have time, probably buy one, but I just can't justify spending 90 bucks when I could spend like 40 and I have tons of acrylic left over. So I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it. I'm probably gonna make some for my friends. So the one thing I did with this was dip it in a bunch of water in the bathtub, make sure everything was good, get all the chemicals off of it before I put it in the fish tank. Um, I put this Eurobrace lid here because I have those um, magnets that are gonna clip directly onto the top of the tank on the Eurobrace. I don't know if I put magnets on the side of it um, if you're worried about it scratching, uh, what you could do is put like a little felt pad or like a filter floss quilt batting in between the magnet. Well, magnet would be on the inside, the filter floss and quilt batting would be here. And then that would give it a little buffer if you're worried about scratching the glass. 
I mean, I'm not really worried about scratching a Eurobrace on the top because no one sees it, but that's kind of just what I did to make sure that it would stay into place. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. So if you like what you see here, you want to see more, comment below, let me know. And as always, hit that subscribe button and try and grab the channel to a thousand subscribers. Daniel, if you grab my tripod. Man, for bloopers. This is what I've been doing with the entire time I've been trying to. And I've been letting it happen. Yeah. He wants to just grab the tripod. You gonna grab the tripod and knock it over? Do it, just don't hit the tank. Yep, just like that. All right, I'll see you next time.